the video about the best parents in your guys' history. So basically what I did was I I did a thing. I believe it was me. I don't remember if I did it or if someone else did it, but something about the best Degrassi parents. No, I think the other guy did the worst Degrassi parents, and then I did the best Degrassi parents, and then I got a list of names and all that. Oh, great. The glitter's gone away. So anyway, what happens is that um, the people on Reddit said who would be good parents and all that, and I wrote, the, and then I looked at who definitely fit the mold, and I put them in this list. I did a poll about the top six. I did the top six. Like I, everyone from one to six came off of a poll based on Reddit, and everyone from seven to ten were my own, my own rankings. So anyway, I number ten is Mama Coyne, C O Y N E. That's Fiona and Declan's mom. She was basically a very favorite person to do with the fact that Fiona was having her issues with alcohol abuse thanks to Bobby sexually abusing her. And, or no, physically abusing her partner. So basically what ends up happening is that, you know, she helps Fiona deal with the charges and to get Bobby in prison, which she, she did. But Fiona lost her life, but basically, no, lost her social life because, you know, she had her problems with drinking. But, but Mama Coyne basically did talk to Fiona about her problems, helped her in Declan. And I think in a sense, she probably helped Fiona deal with her problems with, Declan being with Holly J, that Fiona did not want to lose Declan and all that. Uh, number nine is Casey's mom, Casey Guffrey. So Casey was introduced in season eight as someone in the gifted class, alongside Claire, Ollie, and Connor. Basically, they were going to try the core four again from the original part. You know, Emma, Manny, JT, and Toby. So I figured they would do that. So they decided to go with KC. Kind of a strange move because KC was more of a troublemaker than JT or Toby was. So anyhow, um, KC was introduced and then was uh, Claire's boyfriend until Jenna snatched him up. But anyway, KC's mom was serving time in jail for a drug charge. And then when she got out, she decided to get Casey back as custody, and then they move into an apartment and all that, so that Casey get, doesn't have to be in the group home anymore. So Casey's mom basically is a good person. She works at a diner and all that to supple, to help herself out and to supplement Casey's income. And then Casey's mom is shocked after learning that Jenna was pregnant, thanks to Casey. And Casey was not too happy about that, knowing that, you know, if he didn't tell his mom, then he wouldn't be in trouble. But Casey's mom understood the situation. She talked to Casey about things, and they both agreed that Jenna needs help with the baby. And of course, Jenna has her problems because her family doesn't really belong together. I think Fiona, I think Jenna's father died. I don't know. But anyhow, I hate that. But anyway, Casey's mom was great to Casey and all that. You know, try to make Casey change his ways. Of course, he and of course her, he and his mom moved to Vancouver because Casey's dad was getting out of jail and was going to go after them. So they had to move away from the trouble and all that. Number eight is Manny's mom. Now, a lot of people would say Manny's mom shouldn't be on this list because of how she's a little bit too submissive to Manny's dad. Because she basically may be an enabler and basically just tries to stay out of the sidelines with Manny and her father's spats and all that. But Manny's mom was actually great in the sense that, you know, when Manny was pregnant, she went to Spike. And Spike basically told Manny that maybe your family will be supportive. Mine was. And then Manny's like, not really, because I have a cousin who got shipped to the Philippines because she got pregnant. And Manny talks to her mom and is worried about things. She does tell her mom that I don't want to go to the convent. I don't want to go back to the Philippines. I want to stay here. But I also want to get an abortion. I don't know if I should get an abortion. Because, you know, the Catholic religion doesn't really smile upon abortion that well. So anyhow, Manny's mom does make the note that they need to go to get Manny's abortion. And she's there with Manny 
when they talk about the abortion and all that. And basically, they don't tell Manny's dad. Manny's dad never knew about the abortion and all that. Of course, Manny's dad would be a bit of a dickwad. Yeah, Manny's dad is in the worst parenting list, but he his number is actually lower than you think, my pe people think. But yeah, Manny's mom was supportive of Manny's issues and all that, but she basically was just along with her husband being a bit of a dick. Number seven on the list, and who did not make the Reddit a poll, was Marco's mom. Now, Marco's mom was a supportive of her son. And unfortunately, Marco's mom did catch Marco in a bad position, in a compromising position with another guy. So basically, she knew that he was gay and all that. He ba She basically does say that maybe we should tell... Um, your dad about this, but she also has some suspicions because of how, um, you know, Marco's dad would come through. Um, I do want to say that Marco's dad did not make the top 10 list in either the best or worst. I mean, you could make the argument that he should be in the worst, but no. He was just of the old Italian colloquialism that homosexuals are bad and all that. But by season five, he basically tells Marco that you should be with the guy and be yourself. Marco's dad was, Marco's mom was supportive. All right, so we got, so now let's get to the nitty gritty. This was the best parent poll. Now the top six was there. There are 303 votes. I'm going to tell you the amount of votes they got and what position they're So first off is number six, Terry's dad, who only got 11 of the 303 votes. The reason why I put him in the top 10 was being supportive for Terry at the hospital and other stuff. So Terry's dad was with Terry at the time. And in season one, we saw a glimpse of him trying to deal with his daughter's body issues and trying to tell her that she's beautiful and some guy's going to ask her to the dance. But basically, no one does for some reason. And Terry ends up, you know, going to... Someone a Paige's house, I think. I don't know. And gets drunk and all that. I think it was similar to um, Degrassi Junior High when Steph was supposed to make an announcement at the school dance as school school body president, student body president, and get drunk. But basically, Terry's dad was a strong person. In season two, through Terry, we learned that Terry's mom died somehow, and Terry's dad interrupted Terry being at a birthday party to tell her the news and all that. But Terry's dad was prominently there in season three when um, when Terry was put in the coma by Rick, and he snapped at Spinner and Paige saying that, you know, why didn't you tell me anything? I knew that Rick seemed to be a perfect gentleman and all that towards Terry, but why did you not tell me he was abusive? However, he did apologize to Spinner and Paige, saying that he was acting wrongly. However, Spinner and Paige basically think that he was in the right, that they should have told them. But basically, he was upset, you know, about Terry being in the hospital. Fair enough. So anyway, um, that was huge. And I don't know what Terry's dad felt about, you know, Terry being hurt. So Terry, of course, comes out of her coma and is in a private school and all that. I wish just was Terry's dad and Terry, for that matter, were involved in the Rick Murray situation season four. Number five, by a few feet from being number four, was Mia's mom. She got 25 votes. And the reason why I put her in the top six was that because she took care of Isabella while Mia was doing her thing. I know that it seems to be in a bad way that, you know, Mia's mom took care of Isabella while... And should have let Mia take care of her, her own kid. But Mia was basically the only good parent that Isabella had for a while. Lucas didn't seem to be a good parent or even want to be a good parent. It just seemed that Lucas was just indifferent towards Isabella. That ticked me off in a sense. And basically, you know... In season eight, Mia had troubles. You know, she was dealing with Isabella. She wanted to take care of her kid. Mia was a good mom towards Isabella. And, you know, Holly J was not, not much of a help. But the fact of the matter is Mia's mom told Mia that she would be willing to take Isabella off Mia's hands for her to have a good senior year. 
So Mia does a lot of crazy stuff. She ends up going to Paris to model, and it is unknown if she takes Isabella with her or not. If she doesn't take her kid with her, then basically Mia's mom would be taking care of the kid. And I think Lucas, at the end of it, after hearing what Jane went through, stepped up to be a good dad and promised not to be his father who sexually abused his kid. So, yeah. Uh, number four with 27 votes was Audra Torres, you know, you, you, you know, Drew and Adam's step, uh, mother. She did have a positive influence and got out of her cringe face from season 10 to 12. Now, if you would ask me, based off of seasons 10 to 12, where Audra would be on the worst parents list, I would probably put her in just inside the top five at number five. But because Audra was a decent person and she did have... She did change her tone a little bit, and she did have some good positive points. I decided to put her in the top six, and she got number four, which was great. So Audra, of course, was not really a good person. People called her a Karen and all that. And the fact that she used her influence on the school board to basically push Snake into being a kiss-ass, in a sense, was bad. But Audra... And the problem was Audra basically protected Drew, saying that Drew could do no wrong, even though Drew could do a lot of things wrong. So, anyway, sorry about that. It's just the gas guy. So, anyhow, Audra did open up to Adam's transgender issues. I think, in a sense, Audra was worried about what her parents were thinking about Gracie turning into Adam, but Audra learned her lesson. And basically, when Adam got shot by Finn in season 12... And Drew said, oh, God, I hate myself so much. Audra said, no, Bianca is it. Bianca is a poison. Is poisonous to Drew, basically getting Drew to do bad stuff. However, Drew blows a gasket at Audra and says that, no, this is all my fault. I will do whatever it takes. And Bianca will need help because of how she's perceived by the police. And Audra takes it upon herself to realize that she could be a good positive role model to Bianca. And she was. Bianca followed Audra's instructions and she did pretty well. And Audra felt sat satisfaction. Of course, you know, Audra, I think maybe in a way was happy with Drew and Bianca's wedding because she kind of knew that Drew was going to do the opposite and just dump Bianca off. But Bianca did dump Drew because she wanted to do more things. So anyway, um, Audra was okay and all that. And lest we forget, in season 14, when Drew got in trouble for his proposal for Becky and Pill told him not to go to prom, she told him to go to prom. She basically said, would you rather stay with me for the day? And besides, Dallas needs your help because he mishandled the, the cruise ship the date. He booked it one year too late. So with Audra's prodding, Drew basically does a proposal. The prom at the dot. I originally thought it was at the school. Pill blows a gasket and forces Drew to sit on the sidelines. He'll get his graduation. He'll get his diploma, but she has to send a message to all the students about her policies. And Audra does tell Drew that he did the right thing. I mean, it was Audra's idea in the first place. And Audra obviously must have told her higher ups in the school board about. Pill's policies. I mean, she kind of knew that Drew was telling the truth the whole time, and that's partially why Pill didn't come back. Also, with the fact that Simpson was cleared of wrongdoing about the Degrassi Nudes thing. Added to that. So, yeah, she was strong. At number three, now, the top three, it was close, and the top three had a lot of votes for people. So, number three was Snake with 75 votes. He got... The top three got more votes than their uh, than four, five, six combined. But Snake had 75 votes. He was there for Emma to support her and stuff. People forget that Snake actually partially took care of Emma in Degrassi High Season 3. How many years did Degrassi High were there? Two or three. I can't remember. But anyway, yeah, he was there playing with toddler Emma and all that. And then, you know, Snake was there to try to stop Emma from being catfished in the series premiere of Next Gen. Like, Snake did a good job helping out and making sure that Emma wasn't hurt. 
That led to season two when he decides to date Spike. Spoiler alert, Spike is in the top three. I'm not telling you where she landed. But anyway, Snake, it was with Spike, and Snake had to deal with Emma's issues, especially in Fight for Your Right, because he, had, he tried to calm Emma's issues down with Radage. And says that basically, you do what you have to do. But as, a, as an educator, I can't help you. But as a parent, I, I'm i all for your stuff. And basically, Snake understood that Emma had to do what she had to do. And she did. Despite pissing off Radich in the process. Season 3 was when he really was a good parent. Especially with the fact that Emma was looking for Shane and all that. And Spike wasn't willing to help Emma out. However, Snake decides to tell Emma the story. And decides to be the real adult in the situation and tells her. Of course, frankly, that, you know, Shane wanted to be there for Emma, but his parents didn't really approve of it. And then one night at a concert, he took some acid and either fell or jumped off a bridge. We don't know. I think he would fall off the bridge, by my guess. And he hurt himself and he was put into that home for mental deficient people. And, of course, Emma told Snake, saying, why didn't she just tell me these things? And Snake says... She was waiting till you were getting older, and she should not have done it. I admit it. But the fact of the matter is your mom's upset by this, and you need to give her a call. So Snake does the right thing. He kind of blasts Emma in a sense, but he also calms Emma down and tells her that, you know, she had a right to know, and she should have known, and says to call her mother. And that's very good. Snake was a good parent, um, a uh, step-parent to Emma and all that. I think Snake was really concerned about Emma's well-being, especially in season four. Although the fact, I know there's a negative part of it, but the positive point was that it was possible that Snake's anger towards Raj in season four wasn't just about Rick being ignored by Raj. It was because, you know, his stepdaughter could have died and Raj would have really been in deep trouble if his inattentiveness got Emma killed. Regardless, you know, Snake Snake did walk on eggshells around Emma in season four. She he should not have done that. And I think he may have admitted it. But you know, Snake, you know, in season five was kind of a douchebag and all that as a parent. But he helped Emma deal with her eating disorder and you know, in a sense he was okay. Number two is Bullfrog, aka Eli's dad, who got eighty two votes. Trying to help his son through PTSD and bipolar issues. Eli's dad really came prominence in season 12 in the aftermath of Cam's death. I know that there were a lot of characters that went through an aftermath in the Rick Murray situation. But in the Cam situation, it wasn't as much. But they were prominent. I mean, Dallas was upset with himself and almost jumped off the roof before Fiona saved his butt. Ollie went through problems. Connor, a lot of people went through problems, especially Maya. But Eli was the one who saw Cam's body in the greenhouse. You know, Cam got spooked off by Sig, and he killed himself in the J.T. York Memorial Garden. And Eli playing was playing on a picnic with Claire, and he saw Cam's body. We don't know how Cam died. Either he slashed himself with a garden tool, possibly hung himself, or even took garden chemicals. Two years ago, I... Got a summer job at a greenhouse nursery, and I know about toxicity of garden chemicals. So basically, yeah, I had to learn that. And I think that from personal experience, that like, you know, working in the nursery, I think that's possible. But anyhow, Eli's dad was great in trying to help Eli deal with the problems. You know, he saw the dead body. I know Snake helped as principal because, you know, he saw... Claude's body in Showtime in Degrassi High. So, yeah, and, you know, Eli got his bipolar problems again. But but Bullfrog was a great person towards Eli. You guys say more. And finally, number one with 83 votes. I was at a tie, but I would have also had to break the tie myself. Is Spike. Just by one vote. Can you believe it? What a matchup. So, anyway. Spike was the teen mom who influenced Emma. Also, you know, the first teen mom in the Degrassi universe. You know, Degrassi Junior High, what was it, sixth or seventh episode she was pregnant or something? Something close to, like, the middle of season one. And she had to deal with trying to tell her mom that she was pregnant. 
like her father ran out on her somehow. I don't know what happened to Spike's dad. But anyway, her mom was very supportive of Spike. And she also had to deal with the fact that Shane didn't seem to be want to be with Emma, even though that Shane wanted to be. Mostly because his parents met with Spike and her, her mom. And basically said that we have the plan. The baby will be given away. Shane will be put to private school and we'll never have to deal with that kid ever again. And Shane basically tells the, the, his parents that basically the only reason why they're doing that is to alleviate the guilt and basically try to move on to their lives and just dump them off. Well, they did that at the mental home. They just dumped them off because they figured they'd get rid of them. They were going to get rid of them anyway, hell. So Spike had to deal with Emma alone, in a sense. She could have let Shane help, but she figured that Shane was not the type of person who would be willing to help. So basically, Shane wasn't really helping. So, you know, Emma, Spike really raised Emma with her and her mom. And, you know, Shane having that accident and couldn't be there personally. And, you know, Spike was a great mom and all that. I mean, she was a bit of a ditz towards Emma in season, in the series premiere. But, you know, she she had a talk with Emma at the end of the episode, basically saying, you can tell me anything and I can relay stuff. Spike wasn't too pleased with Emma going behind her back in season two, just being angry towards Spike and Snake being together. But, you know, Spike knew that Emma was upset. Emma was unbearable in the first few seasons, I'll admit that. But, you know, Spike, and of course Spike was upset that Emma went to Snake about about the fact that Spike wanted to abort her Spike, or what would be Jack, and tells Emma, I don't want a second mistake. Now, Emma was triggered. Spike apologized in a sense, but, you know, Emma forgave her. Yeah, Spike just didn't seem to like Emma, you know, trying to end the status quo and all that. But, you know, Emma, when she learned about how Manny confided into Spike about the pregnancy, about Manny's pregnancy, Emma does say that my mom was amazing going through all what Manny is going through just to have me. And it just made Emma more appreciative of Spike, in a sense. And the strange thing is when Emma goes off on her tangent in season five with the eating disorder, she doesn't yell at Spike, even though she should have, because Spike basically was putting a lot of pressure on Emma and all that. And Emma says, you know, would have said, you're putting pressure on me because you can't handle these things. I'm trying to fix the problems. Where are you? I think in a sense that Emma probably should have sniped at Spike in season seven. You know, Spike is upset that Snake's not going back to work even though he got cleared of the charges to do with Darcy. And she says that, you know, you can't let Emma take control because she had an eating disorder last I checked and Emma blew a gasket, should have blown a gasket at Spike. I think Emma in a way really liked Spike and didn't want to snipe on her. But yeah, Spike was a great teen mom. She was a good mom, but, you know, her character just made it in Next Gen. I don't know, just me. So that's just about it for this video. Hope you enjoy it. And the worst will be coming up in the next video. I'm Jeff Diamond. I do.